Hello, I'm Nerez Loot Cartographer, and this is the 20th video in my Fallout 76 Post Wastelanders main quest series. In the last video, we came here to the Palace of the Winding Path, where we got the Die Hard's fragment of the key for our key to the past. In this video, we're going to be going to Bolton Greens, home of the Gourmands, in order to get their key fragment. So it's right down here. We're going to actually fast travel to Vault Tech University as the closest point. Okay, here we are. Going past Mama Dolce's again. First time since we were heading down to Charleston. I'm not sure why there are three limousines here. I can only assume that these showed up to pick up maybe the professors here at the school or something. I really don't know. Maybe there were uh, people who thought that there was a real working vault here, which there kind of is, the experimental vault. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, that vault was a... Uh, in the middle of an experiment, and it was a bad one. One that involved giving the people there high cholesterol foods and watching them die of heart attacks. And it was one of those things where it's like, we're watching them to see whether or not they're going to eat this food that'll kill them, or if they're going to die of starvation. Lovely little experiment. And even the creator of the experiment was not in on that little part of the experiment. He was testing the best uh, possible food combinations to give people for the best health. Turns out his professors decided to screw him over and kill a bunch of his uh, fellow students. Uh, they actually probably were not pl planning on killing as many as they ended up killing, which is all of them. They were probably planning on letting them out after a few days. But, of course, the bombs happened. No one was left at the school to let them out. They were stuck in there until they died. Pretty awful scene in there. But the place we're going is a much worse scene even than that. We'll see that before too long. Let's uh, kill this feral ghoul here. Okay. We got a little uh, footlocker thing here. Automated record think that's related to nuclear winter in Vault 51, but I couldn't tell you to be sure. Anyway, let's head up this highway. Yeah, again, like I've talked about before, there were five raider gangs in Appalachia. The five raider gangs of the Savage Divide. There are more. In fact, uh, I know of at least one called the Reavers, I believe. Something like that. Uh, that were living over at the, uh, the water treatment plant down here. The target treatment plant. Um, but the five gangs that we know of that ruled the Savage Divide were the Cutthroats, those are the head gang, the Trappers, the uh, Blackwater Bandits, the Diehards, and the Gourmands. And the Gourmands were the cannibal gang. They set themselves up here in this, uh, what's it called, golf course, country club, and uh, they really made a mess of it as we'll see very soon. Now this site is overrun typically with Scorched or Feral Ghouls, one or the other. And uh, you can see there that there's the symbol of the Gourmands on top of uh, that Bolton Green sign right there. A lot of traps here, that's the trap symbol there. Okay. Let's jump up here. It looks like, yeah, again this time we're going to be facing the Scorched. This is a strange little place before the war. I mean, really one of those uh, upper-class places. There's Billingsley. Funny to me that these uh, Scorch don't go after him. Luckily, he doesn't seem to get upset with us for killing the Scorch. Can 
Okay. A few more upstairs. Stim pack. Get rid of that broken leg. And heal myself a bit. Okay, still one more at least here. And they are upstairs. Nope, another one. And still two more, it looks like. Let's see, what did that uh, chief one have? There they are. Okay. Some ammo. Let's see. Are they... In here? No. Down here. Oh, they're on the roof. That's right. Okay. Think... Nope, we're still apparently being pursued by something, but I don't know what. Anyway, though, let's go downstairs and start looking at the lore that this place has available. Where... Where are you? I hear you... Okay, well, regardless. Here we go. Facility director... <gasps> Okay, let's listen to uh, Magnus Westbrook's holotape while we hunt for that last one. Wendy Dubois dropped me off at Bolton Greens. I was horrified. Fourth in line for the Westbrook fortune. And Momsy and Papa had the nerve to leave me at a glorified daycare center while they travel the world ridiculous to make matters worse. I'm forced to hobnob with the other children, some of whom are mere millionaires. Ugh, the thought makes my skin crawl. The only saving grace of this prison is that they employ a sommelier in the dining room. Well, it's time to go fox hunting again. Oh, dread. I appear to have scuffed my ostrich job fur boots. I suppose I'll have to use the calf skin ones instead. Ugh, good lord, the pretension. Yeah, like they were saying, this was something of like a daycare for the children of the, the extreme wealthy. The fact that they were disgusted by the idea that they were dealing with mere millionaires? Ugh, okay. Facility Director's Terminal. Outgoing parental mail 9JJA890. To all parents of Bolton Greens applicants accepted from Thurston Wellingham, Director Bolton Greens. Congratulations, I'm very happy to report that your child has been accepted to the daycare program at Bolton Greens. This program is one of the most prestigious on the Eastern Seaboard. Your child will have access to state of the art facilities such as our nine hole golf course a fully staffed horse riding stable, a robust arts program, unique team building exercises, and intensive business seminars. Our motto at Bolton Greens is, Ne plus ultra, which translates to, nothing can be better. That's the standard we live by, and that's why you can be confident that your child is pampered and safe in our hands. Outgoing parental mail, 9JKB432. To all parents of Bolton Greens members, from Thurston Wellingham, director of Bolton Greens, I'd like to call your attention to an incident that occurred today at our wine tasting exercise. The children were blindfolded and given samples of several different vintages of wine. No cause for concern, none of the wines fell below $30 a bottle. Oh, thank goodness. Proper identification of the type, label, and year of each wine was a strict requirement. It seems that some of the children caught another sneaking a peek at the bottles and confronted him, Words were exchanged, followed by blows. This is exactly the type of behavior that you as parents should be proud of. When these children are beyond the safe confines of your estates and mansions, it's good to know that they can take matters into their own hands and handle the situation with swift but firm justice. Well done, parents. Well done indeed. On to outgoing parental mail, 9JMY117. To all parents of Bolton Green members, Thurston Wellingham, Headmaster Bolton Greens. I'm pleased to announce that this year's business keynote will be delivered by Daniel Hornwright, CEO of Hornwright Industrial. Daniel is an amazing businessman who oversees one of the most aggressive and lucrative mining operations in Appalachia, the Hornwright Industrial Mining Company. 
All children are encouraged to attend the keynote as it's likely to be full of insightful and perceptive information about the corporate world. As a special treat, Daniel will be presenting the original prototype scale model of the Rockhound bucket wheel excavator. This device revolutionized the mining industry in Appalachia and helped push Hornwright into the spotlight. If you wish to attend the seminar with your child, please remit the nominal seating fee to our public relations office. Outgoing Printal Mail 9JNT236 To Shelley Nicholson, Public Relations from Thurston Wellingham, Headmaster Bolton Greens. Shelley, I was just informed that this season's yachting excursion is in danger of being cancelled. This will not do. The excursion is an integral part of our experience here at Bolton Greens. I understand that our finances are running low, but to attract the upper echelon of society, we have to spend every dime. If even a single child is sent home without a fully pampered experience, then our mission has failed. I need you to do whatever it takes to make this trip and all of our future excursions viable. If you don't think you have what it takes to get the job done, then quit so I can find someone who will. Outgoing Printal Mail 9JPT402 To all parents of Bolton Green members, Thurston Wellingham, Headmaster Bolton Greens. I'm extremely pleased to announce that this year's Halloween Gala will be our best one to date. We've secured the Appalachian Philharmonic Orchestra to entertain while guests dine in the comfort of our luxurious function hall. Cuisine from some of the finest chefs in the area will be prepared for your continued membership. We're also proud to announce that every attendee will be sent home with a complimentary gift basket befitting the quality and poise of our children and their parents. I would like to extend my gratitude for your continued membership. Bolton Greens is pleased to host your children throughout the year in our best in category after school and weekend programs. Parents, if you're interested in attending the gala event, please remit the nominal ticket fee to our public relations office. Oof, okay. Yeah, this place just seems awful. <laughs> I mean, not as awful as what it became, but uh, pretty awful regardless. I mean, look at this gold pumpkin for the centerpiece here. Ridiculous. Okay, Good let's day talk to, to you. Let's talk to Billingsley. Hello there. Nothing to say, I guess. Hello there. I guess not. Okay. Let's check the uh, employees area. Got a kitchen here. Anything to see here? Blood pack there. I'm not sure why you'd have that in this kitchen. Probably something left over from the Gourmands rather than something from before the war. Okay, and here is the pool. With, for whatever reason... <laughs> one of these in it, a jet ski, why? And we start to see the remains of the uh, eatings of the gourmands. Not much better than the super mutants in terms of how well they kept this place up. Take the gunpowder there. Shower full of blood, right? Okay, in here, a little locker room again with a meat bag. And again, this is not a super mutant location. This is just simply cannibal humans. Let's come back through here. Oh, that's locked. We'll go through here. Okay, and here we go. This is another little office. Gourmand's Terminal. Bob's Terminal. If you ain't Bob, go away. Entry 1. Morris led the Gourmands to Bolton Greens today. We scouted the place two weeks ago, and it's still looking like the perfect hideout. Big building, lots of space, and out of the way. Jerry rigged up one of the rooms for storing our meat supply. We can't have it attracting super mutants or mole rats. Damn, I can't wait to smell that stuff cooking. Entry 2. Took out a caravan passing through yesterday. Five guys, two women. They were traveling heavy and lightly armed, so taking them down was a cinch. We ate well that night. Got a little drunk off some beer they were carrying, too. Cantu got in a fight with Bill after they started arguing. Cantu claimed female meat tasted better than male, and Bill said the opposite. Cantu got his ass beat, which gave us all a good laugh. Now that I think about it, men and women meat both taste the same to me. Lovely. Entry 3. Hunting and catching our dinner isn't so bad. It's the prep work that makes it a chore. It's damn messy. Luckily, we figured out a way to have the robots here do the dirty work. I've got a hand it to Bolton Greens. They program these robotic chefs to be fully automated. We just hang the carcasses in the old kitchen, and in a few hours they're prepped, dressed, and ready for cooking. Now, if we could only get them to help us hunt. Entry 4. Ever since we arrived here, Morris has been acting weird. I don't know what it is, but sometimes I catch him staring at one of the other gourmands and it's pissing me off. Some of the other gourmands are talking about it too, and it's making them nervous. Not sure what the hell is bothering the guy, but if he doesn't quit it, I'm going to take a pipe to his head. See if he stares at anyone after that. Entry 5. 
Gregory went missing and we spent the whole damn day looking for him. Everyone figured he shoved off and didn't want to bother, but I talked them into helping. I don't like losing anyone, but I especially didn't like the thought of losing Jerry, who had science smarts. We almost gave up until we found Gregory in Morris's room. Well, we found half of him. Looks like Morris and his wife Eddie have been breaking the code. Never eat your own. Entry 6. We all voted on what to do with Morris and Eddie. Everyone else wanted to string them up and eat them, but I proposed that we kick them out of the Gourmands and send them on their way. It's tough to get everyone to understand mercy around here, especially Cantu, the guy's a weirdo, but we can't stoop to Morris's level. Let them do whatever they want, but one thing's for sure, they'll never break the code again. Last I heard, Morris and Eddie are headed off to the east, away from here. They better stay away, because we now have our orders to shoot them on sight. Suits me fine. So there you go, a little bit of uh, internal strife there that we're going to have to figure out here in a minute. Morris Stevens holotape. Eddie and I have been feeling a little extra hungry of late, and the others are starting to ask questions. Morris, how can you be hungry when you're still so fat? <laughs> you know what I say to that. I'm hungry because I'm the boss here. It takes a lot of effort to wrangle these useless idiots so we don't all starve, and that works up an appetite. Honestly, it's been several days since we've come across any more food. Usual unsuspecting travelers have been harder to come by. I can only assume the damn cutthroats have been scaring them all away, or not sharing their minds with us. Well, the others won't like it, but we're gonna have to go to plan B. Edie's on board with me. And I've been thinking about Gregory. He's got a lot of meat on him, and he's been rather useless lately. Hell, no one will miss him. Maybe his wife. And this little girl, perhaps. But Vanessa will know what's good for her, and she's too much of a good fighter to eat just yet. Kid. Well, yeah, I'm not a monster. Besides, kids are too scrawny. Lovely. Okay, so... Even the, a bad cannibal among bad cannibals. Gorman's note. He said we weren't going to eat each other, but then, poor Gregory. After that, we had to send Morris away. I don't care if he was the boss. I hear he and his wife, Edie, have been living alone in that cave over the other side of the mountain. Not sure what good it's done, though. Our people keep disappearing. Okay, now then, let's come over here and see one of the most disgusting sights in this place. Which is this. I mean, this is just absolutely horrific. And made so much weirder by the kitten paintings. I don't get that at all. Anyway, purified water to that first aid kit. Now we gotta go find them in their cave. Their cave being Wendigo Cave. Let's fast travel to Seneca Rocks. It's our closest location. So yeah, there's a reason that they're in Wendigo Cave, and that's gonna become very evident once we get in there. Let's just cross this little bit of ground. I'm not sure what we're gonna come across out here. Typically, some little animals, not sure what type. But there is a raider camp right up there, so we'll have to watch out for that. Now, this cave, man, it's got Mirelurk Kings in it, which they are easily the most annoying enemy you can come across in the game. It's just so much health, they do so much damage, and the noise they make is awful. Let's just hope that we can get through this place without dying more than ten times. Let's see how this goes. And I'm already, you know, relatively low on stem packs and don't have the best weapons, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, Feral Ghoul. Got him. Wendigo Cave. Oh, man. I don't know what that... I don't know if the rest of y'all have that, but there's this clicking bug I get in every single cave. And I don't know if it's something related to my the settings I have for... Music or something? I don't know. Because I always turn the music off so I can add it in myself so it doesn't jump around and stuff when I mess up when I'm reading things. Who knows. Anyway. This place has a little bit of pre-war history to it. We'll see if we can find that. 
Yeah, and there it is right there, pretty much. Got a couple of dead soldiers here and a holotape. Wendigo Cave, soldier's story. The world is over. I think that's the first time I've said it out loud. It sounds strange. After the bombs hit, people kept looking to us for answers. And I tell them, don't worry, help is on the way. It's clear to me now that there's nobody left. Winter's been brutal. It started a few weeks after the bombs hit and shows no sign of letting up. Well, maybe, maybe winter's all that's left now. I remember this cave from grade school. Kids called it the Wendigo Cave. I was scared of it then. Absolutely terrified. Now? The only thing keeping us alive. We'll stay here to survive the cold. And we'll get back out there. The men trust me to keep them alive. And I haven't let them down yet. Here's hoping that record holds. So yeah, nice little bit of history there. Learning about nuclear winter. They even feared that it was going to last forever. Let's see what we got here. Some junk. First aid kit, some long fungus coming up through the skeleton there. Rat poison, always gonna grab that. The reason I'm sneaking is the uh, Mirelurk Kings. Again, I'm thinking they're still here. Came through here not too long ago. Oh, there we go. Okay. Another dead feral ghoul. What do we got here? Just piles of bones. This place clearly has the signs that someone has been devouring humanoids alive. I'm gonna disarm that. More it. I think there's a mother. Yep, brood mother. Those are the easiest morads to kill. And they have the best loot. Keep moving. Okay, I seem to be getting close to something. Not sure what. Okay, that's just a Meyer Lurk. A couple of Meyer Lurks, one to the right, one to the left. Got him. Can maybe hope that it's just Mirelurks here this time and not their kings, but I don't know. Okay, what do we got over here? More bones, more junk. Okay, what about up here? Got a uh, marine aerodynamic limb mod, boiled water, another skeleton. This Mirelurk I can hear walking around. Pungy board. Watch out for that. Should take the ammo bucket. Let's see. Oh, Mirelurk. Got him. Okay. Let's hope again. Still just more Mirelurks. Okay, what do we got here? Ah, I think this is a guy who was here at the time of the war. Tried digging a little hole in there, maybe? Oh, another Mirelurk. Crap, I think I saw a king. We'll see soon enough. Okay, got him. Definitely need to do some cooking at some point. Okay, okay, now it's another Mirelurk back there. So this is looking good so far. I hear another one over here somewhere. There he is. Okay. More meat. 
happened. I saw another one over there. What I'd seen before that made me think I saw Marlar King was the coloring of whatever that is right there. It looked like the webbing that you see on the back of the arms of Marlar Kings. Oh, it's two Marlars. Okay. Excellent. Now, the nice thing is I've still got some ammo left, especially with that laser pistol. I'm going to save that for the end of this cave. Wait a second, I just heard something. I'm not sure what. Oh, my lurk. I'm going to need room to back up, so I don't want to leave any of these things behind me. Got him. Okay, what have we got here? Looks like a dead soldier. Mini nuke. Don't need that. Ammo boxes. And an army helmet. Okay. Again, I think people were digging. I'm not entirely sure why, but. Okay. Creepy. Let's keep moving. This is like the most uh, Skyrim looking place to me right here. <laughs> oh, I hear another one. Another Meyer Lurk. There we go. And I hear another one to the right. I will take a dozen Meyer Lurks over two Meyer Lurk Kings any damn day of the week. Can I see a Mylark larva down there? Or spawn, I mean. Let's see. Meat. There we go. Got him. What have you got on you? Mylark meat. I'm always wondering when it's diseased Mylarks, like you'd think that you'd get some sort of meat that's carries a higher rate rate of a uh, disease, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Okay. I think that may have been the last enemy though. Uh, before we get to the very end. This is a beautiful cave. I mean this is really, really well decorated. These guys, whoever the environmental environment artist is on this cave, they did a great job. Okay, I hear another Mylark. But we are really nearing the end chamber, and I don't want to alert the final boss in this area until I'm shooting at him. Okay, we got a couple of uh, three spawn and a Mylark razor claw. Okay. Thank goodness for bats. Take this meat. And let's keep moving. What's this over here? This is another spot where someone seems to have been trying to dig. Looks kind of like it. Great Mintats. Love Great Mintats. Boosts your intelligence. Great for skill checks. Or stat checks, I guess. Dead Raider with some canned dog food. If I had the proper perk, that would be like the perfect food to find, but I don't think I do. And I just reached, uh, basically the weight limit. So I'll probably have to eat or drink something here in a minute. Okay, here we go. Getting close. Yep, there he is. Progenitor Wendigo. That's Morris right there. Let's see. What actually, you know what, I think my most damaging pistol is actually still my Somerset Special. I hate Wendigos. The screams. Oh, good. Move, move, move. Go over the punchy boys, man. Crap. 
Okay. Whew, he is a lot less tough than I remember him being. Gorman's key fragment. Hey, I hope you're still alive out there, wherever you are. <laughs> also tactical, of course. I assume the Gormans just ate each other to death. I'll never ask what actually happened, though. The thought of eating another human grosses me out. Ugh. Ugh. Makes me glad robots were never on their menu. So, there's one more key fragment. This one belonged to the Cutthroats. David, the guy who led us, is alive. Or something like it. I saw him roaming around out there, near his favorite barbecue shack. <laughs> he turned into one of those scorched things. It breaks my heart to see him like that. He could be a real jackass, but he doesn't deserve that fate. Now I'd bet anything he's still got his key fragment on him. So really, he'd be doing everyone involved a huge favor by putting him out of our collective misery. <sighs> and taking the key. Kiss him goodbye for me? Uh, actually, don't. He's probably all malformed and disgusting now. Yeah, yuck. Okay, so uh, that's uh, ED right there. We got a note, Edie's note. Morris hunts people from the road, but he won't share the meat. I've been living off the scraps, but the toenails keep getting caught in my teeth. Now he's starting to look at me strangely with hunger in his eyes. He's changing. We both are. Question is, who's going to feast first? Oh, God, what an end. Look at this. This is horrific. The only benefit I see this entire place... The fact that there's this awesome little arm holding a beer sticking out right here. Uh, anyway, okay, let's get out of here. But you know what? I think actually this should do it for this video. In the next video, we're going to go after the last key fragment, the key fragment belonging to the Cutthroats. And again, like she said, it's in the hands of David Thorpe, the former head of the Cutthroats, who has become a member of the Scorched. So, this has been the Earthloop Cartographer. Oop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.